The biggest challenge that the housing market's facing is how few homes that there are for sale right now. We, we see just a yeah. low inventory compared to before, you know, in, in the previous market when things were really hot, we did have a low inventory, mm -hmm. uh, but we had tons and tons <laughs> of buyers. <laughs> well, and, and there's a couple things causing that yeah. right now. I mean, Mark Fleming, who's a chief economist at First American, um, the root causes of today's low supply are two dynamics are keeping inventory from coming mm -hmm. to market. One of them being that people are rate locked. Yes. Existing homeowners are rate locked. I mean, when you've got a two or a 3% interest rate, it's tough to make that move to your next property. And then what's the other thing? The, the other thing is that people are afraid they're not going to find something to buy. Because yeah. there's just not as much effort, which we saw before too. People were a little bit nervous because it was so competitive in buying homes and, and getting out there. They were worried that they weren't going to find something in time. Right. Now people are just worried they're not going to find something for, okay. for a while. Okay. Well, I mean, let's break down those two big issues in today's housing market. Yeah, let's talk about that rate lock first. <laughs> okay. Rate locked homeowners. I mean, it's the first time in history yeah. that people are more in love with their mortgage than they are with their home, which people have never been in love with their mortgage before. <laughs> I've been in lending for over 20 years and I, I don't know many people that have been this in love with their mortgage. And it's not so much the mortgage, they're it's in love with that interest rate. rate. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's the, the coffee talk, if you will. It's, it's the, <laughs> the water cooler. Yeah, yeah, it's the badge of honor that we can go out and say, I've got a 2.875 uh, yep. interest rate, yep. how about you? And that's holding people back. They don't want to give that up, even though they may not love their current home anymore. Yeah, and, that, and that's tough. I, I can understand that from a finance standpoint, but it shouldn't keep you locked into your current no. home. Um, I mean, you're talking, I mean, the surveys that I have in the, in the um, reports that I've read, I mean, you're talking 72% of current home buyer, home owners, mm -hmm. excuse me, 72% of current homeowners have a 5% or less interest rate. And that's, it's not just property. based on where they bought, but then they refied during the, uh, the drop in rates. Right, so, you could have bought 10 years ago and refinanced during that. Yeah, that the, there's period. not a whole lot of people that are sitting on a 28 year into a 30 year note at this point. People Absolutely have refied and, and have had, and they've extended that. So what, what is the average again? Average 72% of people have 5% or less. Okay, and current rates are significantly, significantly higher. higher. Correct. And so people are, are they, they've got this block on that mm -hmm. they, they've, they've locked their own rates yeah. and, and they don't want to budge from that unless there's such a significant reason to move, uh, divorce, death, deployment or relocation. Sure. Um, and beyond that, you know, a lot of people are just staying put and that's one of the reasons why we have an issue with inventory today. Absolutely. And it, and it can it can kind of stagnate the market a little mm -hmm. bit because then you don't have those people that are e exiting an existing home mm -hmm. to buy a new one. So that's typically what happens. You'll see but, people step up two, or step down. Right? And that's, yeah, that's two homes on the market that are moving at that point. There you go. Uh, the home that they need to sell because they want to buy and then the home that they're buying uh, allows the other people to move. Now, and, just to put on some rose colored lenses here for a little bit, <laughs> I mean, Experts, economists, I mean, we project that mortgage rates will gradually fall. Mm -hmm. We've already seen a downtrend. There's going to be hiccups. I always mention interest rates don't go down in a straight line. Um, it's not this type of slope. There's going to be hills and valleys as we, yeah. as we trend downward, but that could mean more people will be willing to move as that happens. Yeah. So when they, they hit that sweet spot in the interest rate, that it then makes sense to kind of... The question is, what is that sweet spot? And sure. I know a lot of people are waiting to match their current badge of honor. And I don't know that that is going to happen. What caused us to get to rates in the high twos, low threes, uh, into the fours was a pandemic. Sure. Do you want that to happen again? <laughs> no, <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to get back to the... No. And just think about it, because you're exactly correct. I mean, pre-COVID, we were at interest rates hovering in the mid fours. Mm -hmm. That's where interest rates were. We were hovering between four and, was, and quarter and it was five historic percent. lows at that point. Historic lows. And, yeah. and people were springing on, and then all of a sudden they got lower. And I think that is one of the issues that is causing us problems in the market today. Sure. Is that we did get down that point and people just don't want to leave that. Right. And, and 
if rates could just get back down, I think, this is just mm -hmm. professional opinion, is that if interest rates could get back down into that four and a half to 5% range, it would be glorious. I think mm -hmm. that would really cause a major movement, but then we're almost kind of right back to where we were with low inventory. Now you've got an influx of buyers and maybe causes that environment that we had a little bit before. So again, um, wait and see kind of approach, but I think things are trending in the right direction and hopefully we can get back to that. It is, and we do, do need to understand that a lot of it is still optics. Yeah. That rates in the sixes and sevens <laughs> used to be great rates. Absolutely. <laughs> and and what, it's just something people don't realize is yeah. that that used to be historic lows. Yep, absolutely. I mean, I know that in, you know, most most people that are um, a little bit older, maybe that generation before you and I, mm -hmm. Thank when, you. When, when, <laughs> when you're talking, they had, you know, with single digit interest rates weren't a possibility yeah. for them. My parents, your parents, you know, um, didn't really have that experience a lot of times when they bought and sold homes in the past. So again, sixes or sevens historically are low interest rates. Um, but we got really used to that, you know, sweet two and a half to three and a half percent interest rate environment for 24 months. And again, unless we want to get back to that COVID pandemic or another global pandemic, it's not likely to happen anytime soon. And I really hope it doesn't. Yeah. This video is brought to you by Klaus Team Real Estate Solutions. The Klaus Team is different. With the Klaus Team, you have someone on your side. Where you live and make memories is important. We have more unique strategies than anyone else to help you accomplish what matters most to you. We can help you with traditional real estate as well as other options such as our lease purchase programs. We can help you buy first then sell and we can bring you instant offers. We're here to help our neighbors achieve the American dream and help them build wealth through home ownership. For more info or to start your home search, visit us online at klausteam.com. So um, what's the other thing? The other thing is uh, people are just worried that they're not gonna have a place to, to move to. Right. Now, <clears throat> the market has changed. Right. Sellers are um, open to more options okay. now and, and, and they're doing concessions a little bit more frequently. They're still not excited about contingent sales though, okay. where uh, your offer is contingent on your home closing because okay. they know that not that many properties are turning as they were in the past. And so uh, that is still an issue, but we do have some other options, including buy then sell. Okay. <clears throat> and it used to be that if we were doing a buy then sell, mm -hmm. that people would have to use a specific lender for that. Correct. That has changed. Yes, just recently, just, right? Just recently. And so we are now able to do a buy then sell mm -hmm. where you're able to use your trusted lender, somebody like Steve you. that you have a relationship with or you're even able to go and uh, get a new build and take advantage of all of their incentives right. to use their lender and still be able to do a buy then sell. Right, and, and some of that buy then sell, just to kind of add a little bit of color to mm -hmm. it, when we're talking buy then sell, that means that you can buy your next home without having to sell your home and still utilize a portion of the equity yes. you have in your property that removes that contingency. It's very much like a contingent offer in that you're using that sale mm -hmm. in the purchase of the new home, but you don't have to sell it first. So you have access to the equity without selling your home yes. to buy the next and one. And it's really great when you're moving out of state even, yeah. and you're able to go out there, you're able to shop for your home. I've got some friends doing it now. Oh. They were able to go out to another state, be able to buy that home and not have to worry about timing the two. And so we're actually not going to list their current home until they're moved out. That takes a we lot took of photos stuff. first, so it's nice and it's got all this, she's a great decorator, it's got all their stuff. We're able to show the house being lived in, but then uh, they're able to move, bring all their stuff to the new house, and then worry about selling the house in the future. And that's gonna and make people feel really good. It, it, it really like does. I was, I was really talking does, a little yeah. bit over you, it removes a lot of that stress and pressure when in moving. And there's already enough when you're trying to move and buy and sell a home, and, and you've got kids or schools, or. Things and, like that. And you know, when you're doing one real estate transaction, there is, now we do a lot to be able to balance that out, but you're kind of on a little uh, ball moving around trying to keep a balance, <laughs> but you've got two, you're dealing with uh, yeah. a little bit more on that checklist. This allows you to focus on one checklist at a time. 
That's awesome. Which is great. It also allows you to be able to choose that new home before you put your home on the market. And uh, you can uh, make some decisions along the way too, if you want to change your mind and, and that kind of stuff. And just kind of like how we mentioned before, I mean, again, just kind of let's talk a little bit about that equity. I mean, you've got right now, because of what we experienced in the last couple of years, you've got what, almost 50% of the homes currently are equity rich. Which we haven't seen. And, and you know, we think back to the last shift mm -hmm. And that was the big difference is a lot of homes weren't equity rich. Prices were going up and then all of a sudden they dropped and everybody's equity went away. I remember I was in that boat on my house. <laughs> I had to wait to be able to sell it traditionally because I was underwater within nine yep. months of purchasing the home. We're not in that boat right now. Mo the vast majority of Americans are not worrying about being able to close and being equity rich. They're able to take the equity and move it into a new property. That's awesome. And I mean, that can make a major difference when you move. <laughs> not only having that equity, but access to it without having to sell your home. Um, so, I mean, work with a local real estate expert teams mm -hmm. and, and learn how to use these and tools. And I, th I think people too that are rate locked in their mm -hmm. head uh, <laughs> might just in a conversation with somebody like you right. might find that rates in their current situation might not be as bad as they're seeing in the media right that um, average rates don't apply to all people in all situations there's opportunities Correct. to buy down rates uh, and sellers nowadays are you know they're doing concessions yeah. concessions can help with that and so just being able to talk with somebody like you might open up the realm of opportunities and then talking with uh, somebody like me or somebody on my team uh, to be able to say, hey, what is this buy, then, buy first then sell program look like? Awesome.